Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, March 23, 2013. Our topic today is using Weebly for student portfolios, and our special guest today is Valerie Burton. Thanks, Valerie, for being with us today. I think I went through quickly about the recording. Someone else who's missed it uh, hopefully has found this archives and resources page that you have access to all the resources for today's session. And I'll just go on to our world map. I explained to some people that in the session today, if you're new, the laser pointer, I'm going to ask you to use it now. It's on the whiteboard tools, the second icon down. Click your mouse on it, hold your mouse still, and then take your little icon. I'm moving across the screen. and drop it to where you're located in the world. And I always suggest, if you can't make that work, please feel free just to type where you're in the chat. I think I heard Trinidad, and I saw Denmark. And it is great to see. Yes, someone's, yes, the West Coast. Sicily, wonderful, Bricio. I'm sure it's warm there. David's in Brampton, another Canadian. Thanks for being with us. I'm from Saint, in St. Catharines, Ontario. Thanks for that fun. We're going to move on to the next slide. And this is where we ask you some poll questions. And remember, the icon on the right under your name is the voting option. You click on it and get a ring green check or a red X. And our first question today is, do you have a website for yourself? So take a minute and vote. Just waiting for people to cast their votes. And then I will give the responses on the screen. Most people had a chance to vote, and that did not work. Let's try that again. That's interesting. Kim, want to give it a try? because it didn't work for me on my second attempt. Great. Well, maybe it's we have two of them, so maybe mine did work. It was just a little bit slow. Great. So 72% um, Valerie have got their own website. So I am going to clear the votes, and I'm going to go now to the next question, which is, do your students create websites? So it's a green check if it's yes, they do, and a red X, no. So please take a minute to go ahead and vote. Most people have had a chance to vote, so I'm going to publish the responses, and hopefully it will appear this time a little slow. It's a unique opportunity to talk about technology and how it works sometimes and doesn't work. So Kim, I'm going to let this option refer to you. If you want to try publishing the responses again for me, please. There we go. Um, more people do not have students than, than do. About 57% uh, in our session today do not have students creating websites. So thanks. I'm just going to clear the votes. I seem to be able to do that OK. But um, poll question number three for you, and this may be a little bit different. Do you or your students create e-portfolios? And it doesn't have to be with Weebly, but um, just in general, do you or your students create portfolios? OK, Kim, I think we got most of the votes. You want to go ahead and publish them for me, please? Take a look at the responses. 45% are using uh, e-portfolios with students or yourself, and 39% are not. So Valerie, that gives a good indication of the uh, experiences of our participants today. Before we get started, I just want to send out a thank you to my um, Tammy Moore in the chat who is providing closed captioning, and Lori Moffat who is with us today as our backup moderator. So thank you girls for being with us today, faithfully every week. Sometimes um, have to rescue me or one of us when technology defeats us. So thanks for being with us today. Um, I, it's my great pleasure 
now to start our presentation with our topic today, Weebly for Student ePortfolios and our special guest, Valerie Burton. I think uh, it's interesting to hear Valerie's philosophy about technology. First of all, it came about she was displ displaced during Hurricane Katrina and she's now a English teacher at West Jefferson High School in Harvey, Louisiana. And I see Paula said she was in the same uh, school district. And that changing the school uh, also came with some other changes and, and uh, the idea of one-to-one -one, uh, laptop use in a freshman class allowed her to see uh, what kids were doing, spending hours creating video responses using PowerPoint and Movie Maker. And she was easily convinced that the technology in her classroom would benefit uh, her students, allow them to create, produce, and share more of, of their work. And because she uses project-based learning and technology to make learning enjoyable, her students have a variety of strengths and weaknesses and learning styles. And she designs her lessons to, uh, to diversify so that all her students can be successful. So she has a great philosophy uh, and the use of technology. And we're going to um, really appreciate her presentation on Weebly for Student ePortfolios. I know I'm going to turn the microphone over to Valerie now with a big thanks. And I know she has a bit more information about uh, herself and her contact information. So welcome, Valerie. And the uh, microphone is yours. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you very much. I feel I'm pleased to meet me. Happy to meet Valerie. Um, Lorna did a great job of introducing me. And, and I did, and I just thought of something. I'm sorry I have to interrupt okay. you, because Lorna has this problem of remembering what to do next. And before <laughs> you actually get a chance to introduce yourself, we have the other challenge. And please forgive me It's a okay. newbie question, and then you can say, hello, Valerie, again. What is we and how can it be used to support student learning is where we've asked you to start your presentation. Again, I apologize for that. Not a problem. <laughs> OK. Are we ready now? We are. Go. <laughs> All, right. All right. So um, why Weebly? I guess let me answer that question first. Um, Weebly, to me, I found to be one of the easiest tools to use to publish your information, whether that's your information personally as an educator professional, whether that's information about your class, or whether that's information that the kids are creating and producing. So Weebly, because it's free and it's easy, and we all love free and easy, um, Weebly lets you do class sites. OK, you can easily publish announcements, tips for your kids, tips for your other colleagues, for administration. You can have a transparent classroom. It allows us as educators to show off our work. We can embed videos. We can embed different artifacts and PowerPoints. And for students, I think it's really important in 2013 and beyond that they show off the good work that they do, all right? And that they, they take full responsibility and they harness it and, and they're able to say, this is the good that I do. And if they're not doing good, the ePortfolio allows them then to step back and look at what they've done so that they can up their game because their audience is larger. It's no longer just the television, I mean the, the classroom or their mom. Okay, they're now showing off their work for the world. So I hope I was able to answer that question for everybody. All right, hold on tight because here we roll. I love Weebly. Um, Lorna let you know, I first started technology. I had a one-to-one -one classroom. So as far as I was concerned, Jefferson Parish spent a lot of money on computers, yet I didn't really know what to do with them. So I started doing anything and everything I could. Um, I started posting assignments, not with Weebly. I was an Edublog girl first, and I still am an Edublog girl. I'm trying to transition to Weebly, though. Um, because it is it's easy, drag and drop, drag and drop. So with my classroom, my kids did videos. I took pictures of them. Um, I wanted to make sure that we shared our experiences with the world, OK? So Weebly Educator, free website builder, post assignments, information, files, videos, pictures, links. You can create student portfolios. You can create online classes. You can have a digital Dropbox. 
Um, I love Weebly because somebody just mentioned in the ch chat room, no HTML code. Okay, it's really easy to use, and I think that's one of the, the most important things for us as educators. We've got to make sure that it's easy for us to use. We've got to make sure that it's easy for the kids to use. So um, 2013, new individual and collaborative skills. We have to do so much more for the, kill, for the kids than just the same read and respond, read and respond. We need to make sure that we've got opportunities for them to create and publish and share. And Weebly allows us to do that. So here's some information about myself. I'm an English arts t uh, teacher from New Orleans. I work in Harvey, Louisiana, which is a suburb. I blog, I tweet, I share. Um, if you need to contact me, I've got a couple of email addresses. I've got a Google Voice cell phone number. I've got an online business card for myself and my class. And I'll post this slide again towards the end. Please contact me if you have any questions. So it's a time for change. Why write with pen and paper when you can post to your own website? And I really think that that is something that should be driving all of us as we engage with our kids. So today, we're going to talk about the discovery, the ease of setting up a site. We're going to examine some student examples, some school examples, some organizational examples. And right now, I see that some of y'all are posting in the chat room some links. That's what we call like a smackdown when you show all of the good examples that you've seen. OK, I see somebody's lost audio. You're good, Valerie. Are we still good? Okay. Okay, no problem. All right. Um, so I want to jump in to give you some links, and then I'll show you how easy Weebly is, and then I want to start showing off some sites. Okay. So here's a link that you can use. Um, it's an ed it'll take you to the educator site, and it'll give you ten additional student accounts. The way the education site works, you get thirty accounts for your kids. If you use a link that someone gave you, they recommended you, you get 10 additional sites. So you have an opportunity to create tons of different Weeblies, whether you want to do it for a class project, a specific class project, you want it to be your current events Weebly, or you can have it where you're dealing with just punctuation. It's up to you how you want to use your additional sites. Or, and I'm with high school, I want them to have full access of their own sites. So I don't use the classroom sites as student accounts. I use them for personal classroom accounts. All right, with my 11th and 12th graders now, I want them to have something that when they walk away, when they go to college, they can continue to use it. Weebly is really good as far as their um, resources and their online features and their how-to videos. So another link is the Weebly.com features. You'll find tons of information. Um, here are some of my Weebly sites. I've got my own personal ePortfolio on Weebly. Ms. B is online. I've got a sample English site where I've just started collecting tons of different things to show you this is what a site can look like. Um, I'm now starting, and this is under construction, I'm now starting to move my EduBlog site to Weebly. And EnglishIWork.Weebly.com is the site that I've used. So it is under construction, OK? But I've started to have a couple of blog posts that my kids are responding to, just so you can get an idea about what Weebly looks like if, you don't, um, if you're not familiar with it all. Um, my presentation slides for this, um, for this presentation, you can find them. There's a bit.ly link right here. And I've got an online s'more poster. And here's a link for my Miss B is Online Weebly page where I've got some other additional links to some exemplars that you can look at. Ultimately, I think it's important that you see what's out there. If you can do it better, please do it better. If you can borrow, procure, use certain people's sites as models, do that. Because a lot of people have done the hard work for us already. They've experimented. And you can, you can take your ePortfolio, put it on Weebly, check out some other educators, and uh, 
construct yours so that it's similar from theirs, completely different from theirs, whatever. So here is, again, when you get to the education site, if you use the link that I gave you, you're going to see a little notice here that says, if you sign up, both you and me will get 10 additional student accounts. I don't really, I'm not concerned about me getting additional accounts, but I want you to have the opportunity to have as many student accounts as possible. And um, clicking on the recommended link is a way for you to do that. All right, so let me quickly show you how quick and easy it is to do it. Put in your name, put in a password, put in an email address, click sign up. If you already have a Weebly account, you can go up to the top at the upper right hand corner, it gives you a message and says if you already have one, you can convert yours. So if you do have a Weebly, convert yours to the educator site and you'll get the additional accounts like I said. So if you don't have a Weebly, you're new to Weebly, all right, so the only thing you need to do is come up with a title for your site, click a category for your site, hit continue, choose the free website subdomain, which is the very top one. Make sure that the address you want is available. If it's not available, okay, you can make a little bit of changes, all right. Um, you might want to change the spelling, put the number four or two in there instead of the word, or ho however to make it your own. And you hit continue, and then in the course of five minutes, you've got a site that has been created. What generally takes the longest is to come up with a name. And I see Sophia is asking about a subdomain. If you want, if I, if I want to leave my site Miss Weebly, I mean Miss B is online.weebly.com, I'm using the subdomain of Weebly, okay? Um, I can purchase it outright and my site will be MissBeesOnline.com. So Weebly gives you the chance of purchasing your own domain. And yes, I do, multi I do multitask, so I will be going to the chat room back to the slides. Sorry, guys. All right, back to the slides. So in a course of five or six minutes, you've had an opportunity to create your own site. And Weebly is easy to negotiate. There are tabs at the very top, elements, design, pages, editors, settings, and the very top button is publish. And you always want to make sure you publish your site so that people can see the live information. All right? So to quickly go through the tabs, all right, elements is the first tab. Elements is going to allow you to put drag and drop down a box that allows you to put in a paragraph with a title, a paragraph with a picture just a picture, just a title, just a paragraph. And it's custom HTML. Custom HTML asks, allows you to be able to embed any sort of video you want to embed or audio you might want to embed or um, any other, um, uh, if you want to embed a map, okay, or anything, you just drag it down, put in the HTML code, hit publish so that it becomes live, and voila, you've just customized your site. Elements you can choose from, photo gallery, slideshow, you can put files on there. You can have um, a, a place, a box where the kids can click and they can upload their work. You can do contact form where people have the opportunity to um, send you notices. All right, let's see. Next, we're going to look at design. The design allows you to be able to change the way your site looks. You can change the theme, the colors. Some people may have an aversion to red. They don't want anything red. They may love red. They want their site to be red. They want a big picture. They want a little picture. You can do all of that under the design topic. And it looks, somebody said it looks really professional. Oh my God, yes, Lorna, it does. All right, and it's really striking the fact that some of our kids will look at their work when it's live and really be surprised because they only see it in the dashboard mode, the edit mode. And they get really excited to see that their stuff really does look professional. 
Some of the design options, Weebly's done a wonderful job of allowing you to be able to hook up your social media now. Um, you can change the different fonts. You can change the colors within the different templates. You can have a return phone, call, phone number field, and so on. Oh, and yes, if you know HTML codes and they give you directions on the Weebly block, you can easily go in and refine even more so your site to get it to look personally like what you want it to. Pages. The next tab uh, Weebly has up there is Pages. And you, desi you decide what pages you want to include. This is a template I used for my freshman class. And when they did it, I actually took a screenshot of this template, of this um, of the manage page page, and told them to use it as a template to drag in the different pages. When you drag in a page to the right, it gives you a drop down sub page. So I showed this to my kids, all right, and they had a chance to label all of the pages that I required for them to do. Um, uh, Weebly's got a new, and they're changing things. That's one of the things I love about Weebly, too. Um, they change and upgrade often. So what, what it looked like a couple of weeks ago, it may not. So this is what their new managed site looked like. When you click add a page, it asks you, do you want a standard web page? Do you want a blog page? Do you want to have an opportunity to just hook up an external link? All right, so Weebly is really good, and yes, they're very responsive. I've had a, a, an issue once, sent out a tweet to Weebly, and before I knew it, they checked with me to make sure the problem was resolved, and it was. So they are quite responsive to talking to people. Um, you can have your page layout if you want to have a big picture on top, a small picture on top, if you want no picture on top, if you just want a little picture, but it allows you to personalize it. You can password protect a page um, if you have the pro. You can hide it. So even if you don't want the page to show and you just want to put a small link to it, you can hide it so that it's invisible for the navigation menu. Some of the pages that you can include, it depends upon what are you doing this for. Are you doing this for you, your personal ePortfolio, for your kids? Um, if you're doing it for your kids, some of the stuff that they can include, some of the pages, they can have an awards page for scholarships. They can have a page where they list out the coursework. They can have digital stories embedded. They can list the community activities, their goals and aspirations. They can show you if this is, let's say they're basing this as a senior and they want their interested um, employer or their interested school, they can show off some of the research that they've done into their school or their possible job career and show off some of the links that they've discovered. And they can have their resumes up there. They can have videos of some of the things that um, they've done in the world. They can highlight their own special skills, knowledge, technicals stuff. So this goes for them as well as us as professional educators. And a lot of times we forget that we are professional educators. We need to have an online e-portfolio that allows us to show what we're doing in class, um, even if it's just the work that we do on a daily basis. Um, let's see, publish. So I put this slide in there, you got to click publish. And that's the only way that your site becomes live for outside people to be able to see what's done. A lot of times my kids will finish an assignment and I'll look and say, no, I don't see this page or I don't see this, image, this material. And they'll tell me, no, 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 I did it. Did you click publish? No, they forgot to click publish. So be sure you stress with your kids if you're using this with them in class for ePortfolio. They always have to hit publish for it to become live. Now, I've introduced you to the Weebly for Education portion, and some of you may not be familiar with that. Um, what that does is that allows you to set up a site and add students to it, um, link up student sites to your main classroom sites. I think that that's really important to do if you've got the babies, okay? Um, because I've got bigger kids, 
Um, I, I don't do that. I want them to be able to take the site away. But if I do set up a particular classroom um, project where we're looking at um, nonfiction, one of the things I did a couple of years ago was we did the seven habits of highly effective teens, and each of the groups had to present one of the habits, and they had to come up with a quiz and video and so on. Um, and basically, that's one of the uses I, as a high school teacher, could use the class set of um, sites for. But I, I really am all about, my kids are 16 to 18, and I want them to take responsibility. Um, I see somebody's asking about um, inappropriate information. And yeah, that's one of the things that education, the education sites allow you to do that. Okay, you can take over and delete, and then of course reteach and reprimand if necessary um, the kids so that they can know it's, it, what's inappropriate, what's appropriate, what's not inappropriate. They forget a lot of times that we see this, and they go into their whole Facebook mode, and they do do inappropriate things. Um, as you look at one of mine, I think that there's a there's a comment on there about stupid, big-headed, something, 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 one of the responses they did to a post I did last week. I let it stay. Um, I took a picture of it, and, and I'll delete it this weekend when I go back and look at their responses. But we used it as a, as a learning moment. Okay, uh, the person made up a name and a, an anonymous account and all, but um, I just need them to understand your footprints are forever. You know, you've got to have an opportunity to publish your good work. Um, don't just look at, I ask them to look at their tweets and stuff sometimes in Facebook. Are you embarrassed by what you put? You know, you need to be mindful of the fact that um, we, we get to have the opportunity to publish our good work. All right, I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to hurry up. Um, only because I'm looking at the text, and I do have a lot of really good examples I want us to be able to look at. So Weebly is easy to manipulate. Okay, it's easy to ch check the, change the text fonts and create links and upload PDFs and documents. All right, we had a little bit of, um, of a glitch showing doing the app sharing um, when I did a, a, a dry run with Peggy. So what I'm going to show is some slides. I'm going to show some URLs. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to do the app sharing and see if we can get to as many of the sites as possible. Um, yes, I do have kids sign a contract with respect to inappropriate information. Um, yes, I do also, I'm now limited to classroom computers. So I've started to try to do a center sort of thing. Um, with some of the kids doing some of the assignments and then some of them working on the website, some of them doing paper assignments. So let me quickly go through. Mr. Hong did a session uh, for Classroom 2. I can't remember what his session was about. It wasn't about Weebly, but it really easily could have been. He's got an awesome site. Um, and I, I saw his site and I just had to throw it up as one of the first for you to look at. Um, He's got different, he's got a learning blog, and basically it's the class's daily assignments. He's got several different sections. It looks like he's got sixth grade, seventh grade. So he gives them information about their assignment, and then he listed one, two, three. He's got some blogs that are showcased. This is what you can do, and that's why these sites are highlighted. This is an awesome way for you to be able to bring attention to particular kids' websites, make sure they've got the information for the day, make sure parents or administrators have the information for the day. He also includes video links for um, important information. I love the fact that he's got a learning gallery where he's got a couple of different years of his information. And I want to be able to get to a place where I've done that with my Weebly. So I am emulating my stuff after Mr. Hong. Don't tell him, let it be a secret, everybody. All right, the next class I see, Mrs. Season Social Studies class. Um, again, she's got an opportunity to leave notes 
to her class, and that's what that first page is. She's got a note to her kids about some of the stuff that's happening in class. We've got information about tests that are coming up. She's got a tab that's world history, 21st century learning. She's got her own personal philosophy and her About Me page on there. We've got a school site. All right, this middle school has, um, a, they've got a Google Calendar embedded on there. They've got information about their book fair events dealing with Scholastic, and a lot of their, um, a lot of their tabs up top deal with the different subject classrooms and whatnot. So this is an example of a school one. Um, also, this is an example party. It, it, I love it because it starts off with, what a fantastic class. And I'm sorry that the link blocks that. And that is a slideshow presentation on that very first page. So when you get onto it, it starts showing you some of the pictures that they've taken on a project that they've done. Okay, I love this one because this one, the kid, who did this header? The kids did that. So it gives them an opportunity to take full responsibility for the recreation of the site as well. Okay, so they've got a calendar of, of, of things that, that, that are coming up. On the right, they've got their announcements. They've got important school stuff listed on the left. They've got information in the middle. They've got parent information, family information, student resources. All right, so this is another good example of how to use it. Um, Jackie Gerstein is like my the, the, the of teacher educators to follow. This is the one that she's done for her, her classroom technology. And I don't know if I have the link for her professional site on there as well. But she's got an awesome professional weekly site. Um, but she's got different tools, OK, and tips and resources. That, thank you. There's the link. Peggy put up the link for, for Jackie's Weebly site. Her ePortfolio is awesome. But um, on her classroom technology site, we've got tons and tons of different links and resources that you can go to and check out. And this is for the kids and for the fellow educators. Um, here's a school librarian site. Um, and it's got, it starts off, and I think this is really cool. Check out our new books. And this is a scrolling screen. So this is something that they've embedded by library thing. And it shows the different books that they've got in their, um, their library. So the kids can easily see. So it starts off with the library hours so they can see when the library is open and all. So all of these examples are great examples, I think, that allow you to have a chance to see what people have done. Um, and again, steal what you, I'm sorry, procure and model your sites after what you see. And if you know that you can do something better, and that, that really is my motto, if you see something that I've done and you can do it better, please do it better. Okay, and then shoot me a little link, a tweet or something, just to let me know, because then I can give myself a pat on the back. Um, I just think it's important that we, we all stay transparent and we share the resources and the good jobs that we've done. So this is the one, this is the site that I've, I've started to try to um, transition to, englishiwork.weebly.com, and it really is under construction. Um, I've taken an opportunity to throw in some of the assignments that I've posted on Edublogs. I've put that into the site. Um, and just to give people an idea, when you click the English 3 tab, here are the assignments for English 3, here are the assignments for English 4, so on and so forth. Um, I want our parents and other teachers to have an opportunity to see some of the stuff that I have going on in the class. Um, teacher ePortfolios, here's mine, Miss B is online.weebly.com. Um, it changes often, and I say it changes often because one of the great things about being online is you have the opportunity to, to add and clean up and make things better. Um, and I think that's one of the, the most important things I stress to the kids, that it's not a stagnant site. This is your growing ePortfolio. Use it, grow, change it. All right, um, this is one that um, a teacher's ePortfolio, and it's really his professional teaching ePortfolio. So we've got his philosophy of education. 
All right. Um, for those of us who are going through Compass or whatever your version of the teacher evaluation program, um, this is a wonderful idea of being able to house all of the good work that you've done and you show it off to an evaluator. You show it off to yourself. It allows you to be able to collect your ideas so that you see what it is they're looking for. Did I do it? And yes, Peggy, it'll also help you get a job. Um, but it allows you to corral the good work that, that we have. Um, Oh, yeah, and it's Ms. B is online. I've had problems with that for a long time. And again, this is me going from the chat room to the, to the slides. Um, let's see, the next one is Jamie Jacobson's ePortfolio, similar thing. All right, this is a, a portfolio where this person is an artist. Okay, and, and I say an artist because a lot of her work, she's got a lot of pictures and images and stuff that she's done. All right, and these are all wonderful examples of for you to be able to have an, okay, yeah, I did have a chance to have Jackie's stuff. So here's a link for um, Jackie's site. All right, student ePortfolios, and I'm going to quickly scroll through and let's see if we've got some good time, um, some time to play with the app sharing. I hope I do it right this time. All right, here's Dominic. Dominic is a college student, and Dominic's got some stuff about the speeches he's delivered, his learning reflections, other stuff that he's done in class. He's got an About Me page. And I think it was interesting to see his take on it as a college student. All right, it's a little, um, um, it, well, it's a little more academic, and it, it, it should be. Okay, you can see the difference between college sites and high school sites. Uh, this is one of my former student sites, Sarah, and uh, Sarah loved Hello Kitty. Um, I think she loved the fact that she could personalize her site. She has the opportunity to, and some of the pages, if you scroll across her tabs, she's got an award page. We started off doing a Who I Am assignment, I Come From. She's got some writing samples. She's got a blog. Um, she's got some work that she did on an anti-bullying project that we have. Um, I think she was really excited because she had the chance to make the site hers, all right? Courtney's Cribs, this is not one of my um, students, this is something that I found online. And this is an awesome site because she's got, she's had an opportunity to put herself into her site. Okay, she starts off with pageantry cheerleading. All right, then we've got communications, the cutting edge, inspirations, honors, education, portfolio, her videos. This site is a personal site that allows her to highlight, okay, her good work. And I think this, this one is a really good example, too, of what you can do with um, your sites for your students. Um, Weebly, one of the important things I want to pull out too with Weebly Education, you have the opportunity with your sites, your student sites, to be able to have a password projected, I mean protected. If you have the pro account, you can also have it password protected. And I know that this is really important to those of you who have younger viewers. Um, or younger students, rather. So, um, quick recap, Weebly for Education is perfect. Um, use it for websites, e-portfolios, but um, it's got drag and drop. It's um, really easy for you and your kids to be able to express themselves. You don't really need any major technology, te technical skills involved, no HTML code needing, needed, and it's been one of uh, times 50 best websites of the year. Now I'm going to try the app sharing. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that this works out. All right, I'm going to All right, so um, because I don't have the chat room, I'm going to assume you can see my screen. If you can't, someone let me know. We can't see anything. So I'll assume you can see.
Okay, so this is my personal web page and my personal ePortfolio, and I want you to have the opportunity to see the drop down tabs. So you can just have a few major tabs across the top and then have drop down tabs. Um, these are the resources for today's presentation. And it's taken a little while for the pictures to load. And I'm going to slow down because what happened yesterday was I was moving too quickly. And I didn't let the site load up. So I'm going to talk and hope that everything is loading up. On this page, you'll see below are links to educational Weebly sites to use for ideas and inspiration. And most of these are ones that I just quickly talked about on the slide but I've linked them up to the actual sites so that when you click it, you have a chance to go around and see some of the awesome stuff that's being done. Um, I'm going to open up Mr. Hung's site just because I'm I was like super, super, super impressed with his. And again, if I've got technical difficulties, holler at me. All right, so we're on Mr. Hong's site, and Mr. Hong has on his banner some pictures that rotate in and out. And I can see because of the app sharing and the, the bandwidth and everything that it's taking a little while for the Excuse me, Valerie. I, I'm going to interrupt so this to I'm say not it is loading really slowly. Uh -huh. Mr. Hung's page hasn't loaded for me yet. So maybe we ought to go out okay. of app sharing and let you talk at your normal rate and then go into Q&A. And, and I know that Glenn has some experience he'd like to share on the mic too about his um, students and Weebly. Okay, so she's saying I talk fast. Is that what you're saying, Peggy? But that's okay. Um, <laughs> no, I'm <just> saying, <laughs> keep us moving along. Thanks. <laughs> All right, are we back to the slides? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, so everything that, um, you know, all of the links that were coming in, um, you've got in the live binder, okay? So you can easily quit, um, click along and ch check them out um, because I, I really do think that it's important for you to check out a lot of different sites and see um, what, you, what you like and what you don't like. Okay, so we have a couple of people who want to share. It looks like I'm looking at the chat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a couple more slides and then um, so this is me again. All right, again, I blog, I tweet, I share. Um, if you need to contact me, please feel free to contact me. Um, oh, thank you, Nicole. I do talk fast, but it's okay, and I know it downloads slowly. Um, I want us, one of the, and it really is important to me that we connect as educators. Um, so if there is a question, is there, if there is a comment, if there is a, a concern, if you want to know how to do anything, um, let me know. So I'm checking out the chat. Let's do Q&A first. So anyone who would like to share the mic and raise a hand. Okay. Um, so do I keep going? For, oh, here we go. Oh, look, questions. There we go. Raise your hand if you'd like to. <laughs> All right. So um, looking in the chat box, and, and Peggy, let me know if, if, that's, if I should be doing something else because I'm going to start looking at the chat box. Um, I have videos of my students. Can I upload them and how? So Sophia just happened to be the last comment. Thank you for the virtual applause, whatever that is. So Sophia, um, if you've got them embedded, if you've somewhere where you can get an embed code, um, what you can do is get that embed code because I know Vimeo, our, our, our district really is not YouTube friendly. So what I do is if I choose to use a video or something, I generally use Vimeo or something, but it gives you an embed code. And all you have to do is drop down a box that will allow you to take the HTML code and plug it in. And then, bam, you'll be able to have your video online. I see that someone asked about PBWorks and um, 
wikis, I started off with PV Works and EduBlogs at the same time. And yeah, I, I'm with Peggy a little bit. I think I like Weebly because it allows you to just drag and drop and you don't have to configure your page to get something exactly where you want it. Okay? Um, and come on, Lori, if you've got some more questions, you can drop them in the chat box. Um, but um, Weebly for me just worked out a little easier um, because they didn't have to they didn't have to negotiate how to get it on center or how to you know set it up. It was just easier to drag and drop. Um, what else do we have? How many student accounts can you have with a free version? Um, with okay, um, Weebly Education is free. And um, I believe it's 30 accounts you get right off the bat. It's 30 or 40. I'm sorry, I can't remember right now. And then what happens is if you use the link that I gave you, if you're new to Weebly or if you're not new to Weebly but you're new to Weebly Education and you convert it, you get 10 additional accounts. So, um, and Peggy put the link up there for Weebly Features and I'm sure that the exact number will be there. Okay, where can I find information about how to do all those neat things like embedding, scrolling, embedding Google Calendar, say, et cetera? Okay, again, um, I've got a couple of links for Weebly Education, the resources, all right, and a lot of that can be explained. But Betsy, once you realized that embed equals HTML code, and you start playing around with stuff and you click embed and you realize it, g it gives you this great big old foolishness, a series of letters, that's the HTML code that you just drop into the HTML box that's on Weebly. So you pull down HTML, you just you copy and paste the code in there and then voila, it's embedded and you've got your video or your calendar or whatever it is you want to embed. And these really are like um, free accounts. Um, we have students that are only placed like 45 day placement. Can I replace that student account or how does that work? Honey, that is a really good question. Um, I imagine if you set up generic accounts, Meaning, um, if you set up like student one or group one or something like that, and um, you would be able to cross check it. Um, I mean, you know, switch them out back and forth. One of the comments I saw in there is about moderating. Um, I wish that student, okay, we will allow this to post but before they're published. It's hard to get around the class to provide. Yeah, I understand. Um, Jane, what, um, what I've done a lot of times is because the kids know the consequences of, you know, inappropriate posting or because a lot of the planning and stuff they do, they do on paper first and then they check with a, a kid. Um, a student next to them or someone in their group for some help in doing the revising um, because it is difficult to actually see their work before they actually publish it online. But that really is part of the learning experience um, is for them to see that once it's published, it's out there. So if you sound like really silly, and you know that's the way it's published, and that's the way you look. Because a lot of my my kids, um, they publish foolishness, not realizing that oh, this is gonna come back to haunt me. Um, someone asked about the link to get the ten additional sites. Um, I know it'll be up in the live binder. I was trying to see if I could see it right now, but I can't. But it'll be in a live binder and it's on the PowerPoint presentation. So some of the links that they've shared with you will allow you to download the actual PowerPoint. Yeah, I know Kim, the link for the referral thing. It's a, uh, um, and I'll look and see if I can't find it. So the link for the exemplar is the link for the referral link. Let me see if I can find those real quick. So any other Comments, questions, because yes, I am multitasking. 
Okay, a link for the exemplars is right here. I just posted those, Valerie, so don't worry about posting them. I'll keep okay. up with you. All right. Okay, thank you. you. And Connie, um, did you have a question that you wanted to use your mic, Connie? Okay, go ahead and... Uh, We've given you the mic, Connie, but it looks like it's grayed out, so. Okay, great, thanks. So keep on going. Uh, somebody asked about the fall sizes for teacher and students, and they, they're the same. Right, I haven't had a problem, thank goodness. It's 100 megs, um, unless you, um, I so believe, far, unless just you have the the pro site. Okay. Um, Mark, I saw I had a question too. Something about having parents sign up their kids. Um, I saw someone as a homework assignment, I don't know what grade this was, second or third, but as a homework assignment, the kids were to go home, have the parents, help them create their Weebly site, and then the kid brought in, the students brought in the site, the link for their portfolio sites to class. And then what the teacher can do is what you can do is bookmark all the links. So that that will give you a way of having everyone's link. And the parent and the student have full control over, you know, what happens on the sites. So I hope, I mean, I don't know if that answered Mark's question. I saw that earlier. But if you use the educational version, then you can set up student accounts underneath your main account. Right, Somebody was right. asking about that. Right. Oh, okay. That's what it was, you think? Because I saw okay. somebody, yes. mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was really cool that, and, I, and I'm sorry I didn't write down the name of this person, but they were personal, they were setting up personal email e-portfolios for their kids to take with them in the second grade, you know, and they got the parents all involved in it. Um, somebody, what else, Sessie? They have their own, but do they go on yours or blog? Um, Sophia, I missed the first part of the conversation. So are you asking about do they go on my site? And yeah, they leave some comments on my site, but I have 11th and 12th graders, and I really think it's important that they have their own personal spaces. You know, so they, they all have their own personal sites. And I'm sorry to say that this has been one of the worst technology years for me. I have had to fight for laptops. So my kids have made a site, and we really have not had the opportunity to use them the way I liked. So even for our, our last assignment, I posted something, and they posted responses and comments. They used their cell phones. So if there's anybody in Jefferson Parish listening, I'm sorry, I broke the rules, oh well. And that's one of the things I know Weebly, I love about Weebly, you can use the cell phone and interact with the site, and I think that that's really important. All right, so I see we've got questions about Symbolu, which is awesome. Yeah, that's good, Paula. You can put all of the links for their e-portfolios or whatnot in Symbolu, and it gives you a page of having everybody's site. Um, do we have any more questions? Because I'm trying to scroll. Um, the Weebly Pro and the Weeb and the Education version are kind of two different things. The Pro version gives you some extra features like uploading files, uploading an audio or a video instead of using the embed code. But for most of the things that you'll do, you don't necessarily need the pro version. Um, you can do that um, with the free version. Weebly Pro is not free. It's like $40 a year. Um, but we use the, the pro version just for some of the extra features. And Kristen, um, using <laughs> using Weebly might help your parents not freak out because Google Plus is 
Yeah. She mentioned the fact she's got a Google Plus site and some of her parents uh, freak out using Google Plus and they might feel a little better um, than being able to have their Weebly site, you know. Um, what other questions? Thanks. A lot of our teachers have been paying and I've been holding out. Yeah, there's, I haven't seen, you know, and I, and I do love Weebly and $40 a year is not that much, but I haven't found a need to pay for anything because everything I've wanted to be able to do, I've been able to do using the free site. Um, comparison using Weebly and Edmodo. Okay, yeah, um, Edmodo I look as more of a learning management system. Um, so it's your classroom that is online and your kids can, you know, I, I really do look at it as a classroom that's online. Um, Weebly, you can set it up as part of your classroom, but I look at it as being an extension of. Um, I like open, I like the transparency of um, Weebly, but you can easily do the same things in Weebly that you do in Edmodo. Your kids can upload work. Your kids can comment and reply to one another's work. You know, are there any ideas about how to use a Weebly with Schoolology? Um, you can have both of them linked up to one another. Um, but yeah, you can use Schoolology for your in-house online classroom and then have the, their Weebly portfolios or blogs. Because um, you can set up either a blog page or a web page, but that can just be, again, the extension of your classroom. So they can do the pre-planning in Schoolology or Edmodo, and then they can do the final publishing on Weebly. Do we have any other questions? Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. It's at the top of the hour, but we invite everybody to stay on. If you still have questions, and we can continue the conversation. Um, but if you do have to leave, we will continue recording. So you can view the recording that we post to our blog page on our Weebly site. And we'll give you that information in just a bit. We want to let everybody know that the School Leadership Summit and Steve Hargadon is, partial, is um, partially responsible for organizing that. That's going to be all day this upcoming Thursday on March the 28th. So you're going to want to make sure that you check uh, the schedule and some of those things that are coming up. And he's got part of that day an interview with Michael Fullen. And then on April the 2nd, he's going to be talking with Matt Hearn. On April the 4th, John Hattie. And April the 9th, Madeline Levine. So you're going to want to make sure to check those. And you can always check futureofeducation.com for more information. But the School Leadership Summit um, is going to be a great all-day virtual free conference with lots of different presenters. So you'll want to check out that link and see the schedule of each of the concurrent sessions. And for our shows, we want to let you know that next weekend we will not have a show for the Easter holiday, but then on the 6th we will return with Kyle Pace talking about technology in the music education classroom. Then on the 13th we're going to have Lisa Dabbs who's going to be talking about the new teacher community Twitter chat that she helps organize each week. And then on the 20th, we're going to post uh, cancel our show so that everybody can uh, attend the Den Spring Virtual Conference. And then on the 27th, we're going to have Patricia Fugelstead for our featured teacher So for April. So you're going to want to make sure that you tune in for those. And again, that's the information about the School Leadership Summit, um, full information about all the different strands. And again, one thing is it is free, free, free. So please be sure to check that out. And Live Winders is going to be having another session this Wednesday. And those are the times at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, and Barbara, Jean, and Tina, they've been on our show. 
and there, it's going to be held in this same room, so you can use the same uh, the same link. And they they're going to be talking about their tips and tricks of using live binders, and they're going to have a new editor that they're going to be releasing, so you're going to want to check that out. Um, coming up this Wednesday. And this is the link for the DEN Spring Virtual Con that you'll need to register for. So be sure to check out that link. And it's going to be an all day event. And many of some of the presenters that day we've also had on our show. So you'll want to check that out. If you'd like to nominate a featured teacher for one of the upcoming months, we welcome you to do so. You can nominate yourself or any educator that works with colleagues or teachers, students of any kind using that link. And then link is also in the live binders. So you'll want to check that out. Once you exit today's session, a survey link will automatically open for you. And we'd love to get your feedback on today's session as well as future topics. You can input that information in the survey as well as request a certificate for the professional development certificate. You can just put your name and email address and Peggy will take care of sending that out. And anytime you watch a recording, you can use that same survey link um, that is in the live binder and then request a certificate for any recording that you watch from our archives blog page. We want to let you know that we also have an iTunes U channel that you can subscribe to to get the MP3 and the um, MP4 videos of each of our sessions. In case you miss it or you just want to review it, you can subscribe through the iTunes U channel or through the RSS feed on our blog post on the R archives and resources page. And you can see all of the information that we post each week after the session. So be sure to check that out on our Weebly site. And we want to extend a very special thank you to Valerie for sharing today and to Steve Largadon, who is the founder of our organization and webinar series, and to Weebly, who helps provide our website, and to each of you for contributing to the conversation and questions and everything. So thank you so much. And now we're going to pass it back to uh, to Valerie if she has um, anything that she would like to add or if you have additional questions that you'd like to ask, now would be the time. You can also um, use your mic. Just click on the hand and we'll let you know. Uh, we'll give you the mic and then you can ask your question directly. Or you can just continue posting them in the chat and Valerie will continue addressing them that way. I uh, think most of the questions that I took down were answered. That, uh, Lori, did you have any questions that I missed or that were not addressed? Yes, most were Thanks. addressed already by somebody or by Valerie. So. Um, it will, I'll give one last call before we let everybody go and enjoy their weekend. Um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask Valerie, if for some reason after the session you think of something, this is Valerie's contact information, a ways that you can contact her on Twitter, Gmail, and then you can also view her blogs and so forth. And all of those things are also in the live binder link and you might want to take down that live binder link so that you'll be able to contact her after the session closes as well. So thank again, you everybody we want to, for coming. Yes, thank <laughs> you so much, Valerie. This has been great information, and um, it's not necessarily a how-to on how to use Weebly, although there are some tutorial videos and there's lots of help information on the Weebly on the Weebly site. And that's kind of how we learned ourselves, just spending time and trying out different things and they have lots of great features. And it makes it very simple to drag and drop even when you're working with younger students like Valerie mentioned. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, somebody's asking about a live binder um, or Weebly for uh, portfolios. 
Uh, wait, using a live binder, Weebly? Wait, do it again. Would you recommend a live binder, a PowerPoint, or Weebly for uh, creating um, portfolios? Good question. Um, live binder, I, I love, I would not say the PowerPoint just because, um, well, I just think it should be published where we are now, it should be published. And you can do something on PowerPoint, but then unless you publish it, it's just yours or for your teacher or whatever. So you've got to have some sort of venue to be able to publish it. And Weebly can do that. So technically, you could do both. Um, Live Binders is also a great way of having an ePortfolio because it allows you to have the various links to all of your sites. Um, I think as I use every tool that comes out that I find about that might be interesting, I try to use. So um, live binders I've used for years and years and years, and then I put it to the side, and I pick it up every once in a while. I think Weebly, though, is just one of these tools that I, can, I continue to come back to. You know, I never really stray far from it because I can do so many things with it, because I can embed the videos or the PowerPoints or the pictures or whatever. Um, but all three, you know, would be, work, would be fine for publishing the work. I think the most important thing is for us to get our mindset um, into having us and them publish our work. You know, because that helps to make it important. It's not important unless, you know, you feel good enough about it to show it off or whatever. And I think that's been something that I've, a discovery I've had with my kids. Now their work has become more important because someone's looking at it. Before it wasn't important. It was just for me. It was just for a grade. And it's research shows. Um, voice Go ahead. Print. Go ahead. Re no, I was mm -hmm. in the comments. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Research shows. Re I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to interrupt, but research shows that when students have an audience larger than just their teacher or their, or their classroom or their peers, the performance and the quality of the work goes up. So when they know that even if you do publish your PowerPoint to like something like SlideShare, just knowing that they have a larger audience sometimes um, it definitely increases the productivity and the retention of the quality and the content that they're producing. And that's very true because a lot of times they don't. Um, and if you do these kinds of things, put a, put a map, um, a tracking map on your site um, because it, it's really funny the difference that um, the kids think, they know it's published, but they really don't think anybody looks at it. And every once in a while, we'll get a ping on a map from somebody from somewhere, and it's like, oh, somebody was on my site. Yes, baby, somebody was looking at your work. It's a good thing we, we took time to clean it up and make sure it was good. You know, so if you've got your kids producing stuff, yeah, there's the cluster map is one. And... Um, Cluster map allows you to get hits on a map so that kids can see visitors that have come to the site. And it's just another way of, it's just another way of allowing, um, you know, the kids to see, you know, that people are there. And yeah, we, Weebly can keep, the, provide you with the site, the stats too. But think about how it is when they see that little bitty dot on that map. And they know somebody's been there. Um, yeah, check out Live Binder, Nicole. Um, it's awesome. And they put the links in here again. Um, just Live Binders, period. And then our, the Live Binders for the Classroom 2.0. And it's, it's, it's a great, great re resource. Oh, look, there you go. So, Nicole, you can, there's a Live Binder webinar. And you'll be able to, to discuss. So any anybody else, any other questions, comments, concerns? I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out this Saturday. I appreciate yeah. that because our Saturdays are valuable. I appreciate that most definitely. Great. Thank you so much. Um, the, I see that some of the questions and things have wound, I don't think winded down is the correct word, wound down. 
have stopped yeah. coming through, uh, but that's the contact information. It's also in the live binders. So take a moment to fill out the survey and to use the link in the live binders to nominate a future featured teacher. And thank you so much. We will see you the weekend after um, Easter. But be sure to join Live Binders for this Wednesday and then the Leadership Summit on Thursday and then have a wonderful Easter holiday, Easter weekend. And then we will see everybody on April the 6th with Kyle Pace. Uh, it's going to be, even if you don't teach music, um, some of the technology tools and things that he'll be sharing will still be very interesting and applicable that you can use in your regular classroom setting. So be sure to join us. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend and week, and we will see you online. Thanks. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye. Smooches, smooches. <laughs>